So I wanted to give y'all a little update on this MSD. The MSD Atomic 2 has been, well, MSD has been bought out by Holly, but they have changed the software they have put in the side of the MSD. It's made just like the Sniper. Looks a little bit different up here. It still mimics the, the original MSD, but it's got the, the works and the internals of the Sniper or Holly stuff. So I spent a lot of minutes, several calls. This thing would fire up, run a little bit, cut off, fuel pump would hang. I got in touch with Holly. They said that my firmware needed to be upgraded. And so I did that. And I asked that guy, I said, so that's gonna fix my problem? He said, yes, sir. So, got off the phone after waiting for like 55 minutes to talk to somebody. And I upgraded the firmware, like you said, no good. So, I went to call back. They were in a meeting the rest of the day. And so I called the next day, got up with a guy named Ray the next day. And he told me, he said, yeah, he said, you need to dig back into your wiring. You don't have a good ground to the pump. And I said, okay. But I said, the pump's wanting to run all the time. And I said, now the pump's not wanting to run at all. And he said, well, he said, that tells me that it's a ground issue. So I went back through my wire and I had to pull the battery box and all that back off. I had to, to dig back through my relays. I double checked everything. So this wiring harness don't have a, it's got only one wire, which is your pink wire uh, that is hot continuously during cranking. And that is just for the, the distributor. Well, Holly don't want you to tap into any of that. Uh, so this kit here was put in by a previous shop and it's called a Rebel kit. It's just, uh, it's just a cheap, a cheap kit. It's not set up for fuel injection. It don't have a, like I said, it's only got this, this one wire that is hot all the time. And then they add this wire in, which is tapped off of this same wire. So if I, this one stays hot all the time. Well, you can't wire into that because if you do, the power will stay on all the time on this and run the battery down like while you're in the bed. So I, I reached out to Rebel and I asked him, I said, is there any way? And they were like, yeah, just tap into the, to the hot wire that goes to your distributor out there. He said, it don't pull much power. Well, Holly is very finicky. Their software is very subject to RFI interference. Radio interference is what they call it. So I knew I couldn't do that. Well, what I've done is I went online and I've done some research. This is a Bueller timed delay relay. And you can see right there that it's adjustable. It goes from two seconds to like three, three and a half minutes. So what I done, there's the plug that plugs it back off. What I done is I put it in line. So when the key is rolled forward to my 12 volt positive, when you go to start the engine, that key 12 volt falls out and wouldn't send power to this, it would reboot. So what I done is I wired in a relay. When it gets a signal for uh, the 12 volt signal, it closes the relay inside, which on the back side gives me a full 12 volts to this right here for as long as I want it to, 15 seconds to, you know, up to three, three and a half minutes. Well, once the truck is running, this relay, it, uh, you know, it stays on and it gives me my full 12 volts all the time. All this is, is just a cheap way to bypass or to run a fuel injection system, which needs 
hot during starting because if it's not hot during starting it might try to start but then as soon as the the key 12 volt falls out from the turning from the power draw of the starter and stuff it will it will uh it stop so that's just a cheap way thirty dollars for the relay bueller's supposed to be a really good relay and so that's what i did well now the customer he's not really comfortable with that so he uh he's kind of seeking out maybe just put a whole new wiring harness one that is set up for um fuel injection so on to the tubs i got the tubs welded in he come by yesterday and you can see these corners right here what i've got to do is add a piece like a little angle piece over to that way it will look like this is running into that and it looks solid well he got to looking at it and i asked him i was picking at him i said are you going to be able to cut your boards tight so that it fits right up against that radius or are you going to leave a gap and he said well i can cut the boards tight but he said wood contracts and expands and he said it's going to be uh going to always be a little gap and i said well i was kidding when i said this i said well i'll just bead roll a piece that will mimic this bead and get it to you know once this is over that bead will come out as if it is coming on around that way when the wood slides under it will slide under the bead he said that's a good idea he said can you do that i said well i think i can and he said well fix that for me i said all right so that's going to be the the next project i got to get my bead roller and all my dies out and and fabricate him a rolled edge to go around that wheel tub so that when the wood slides under he's still going to make it fit tight but it'll have a it'll have a a bead edge it'll look continuous it'll have that flow that bead will hit and then it'll go around and it'll all look be something different something custom so the fuel tank what i decided to do was go in and weld nuts on the inside of the frame that way all you got to do is just raise the fuel tank up and bolt it in from the bottom you know they had it they had it where it was slid in the frame rails in between so i mean it, it wouldn't come out of the top and it wouldn't go out of the bottom so i mounted it to the bottom and all you got to do is just six bolts drop it out move on so that's just the updates for this week and i have uh i've been working on it and i've been working on the uh there's them old big fat wheels and tires i've been working on this beauty right here got the door latch and stuff in it yesterday on both doors and check out my door handle the way it uh the way it works inside but anyway i got the door latch and stuff put in it and then i got the door striker and all painted everything is coming out of uh the old car the old car that's junk out here i'll show it to you you know it's slow this is all the stuff that was in the trunk of that fire lane but it has been a slow go on this car because here's the Here's the donor car right there. Uh, I have just stripped it. Got the rear end out, got all the front suspension because when that fire lane came, it actually came on a crate and a rolling cart uh, just like it was sitting with nothing under it just like this one sitting the floor pans was eat out of it i mean it was a mess so i have stripped this one all that i could use off of a four door and 
have got it up to that level, but it has been a slow go. Y'all have a great weekend, and uh, I'll catch you on the next one.